Today we take a look at one of, if not the most OP weapon in Baldur's Gate 3. Let's get to it. There is a weapon in Baldur's Gate 3 that can give you advantage on every one of your attacks, your enemy disadvantage on all their attacks against you, as well as giving you advantage on all of your saving throws, and the ability to cast a spell at will without expending any resource other than an action. It's also so powerful that it can cause your enemies to just skip their turns, and if the right conditions are met, you also get an additional 1d6 damage to all of your melee attacks. That's already a massive list, but we're not done. It can also prevent enemies from ever having the chance to take attacks of opportunity against you, allowing you to freely roam around the battlefield. Well, such a weapon does exist, and it is Char's Spear of Evening. Now wait before you click away, because I know some of you are going to be like, I already know about that one, and click away. I don't think you do. I don't think you understand how incredibly broken and strong this weapon is. This weapon literally works for any build. Doesn't matter if you use melee or not, the abilities that come with this weapon are strong for spellcasters, are strong for melee users, are even strong for ranged damage dealers. And I'm going to explain to you how and why it is so incredibly broken and can be used for all of those builds. Let's quickly take a look at the weapon here for those of you who may be unfamiliar with it. So it's base damage. If you're using it with two hands, it is a 1d8. If you're using it with a single hand, it is 1d6. It has the ability Shar's Blessing, which states you gain advantage on saving throws while lightly or heavily obscured. This weapon deals an additional 1d6 to creatures that are lightly or heavily obscured. On top of that, it gives you immunity to being blinded. On top of that, it also has the ability Shar's Darkness. Shar's Darkness creates Cloud of Darkness. It's the same as the Darkness spell, except it costs you zero resources. It's just an action. You can cast it every single turn, has no cooldowns, no disadvantages and it lasts for 10 turns. The spell does require you hold concentration. However, it's a free to cast spell, so it doesn't matter if concentration gets broke, you just cast it next turn anyway. And lastly, it has weapon enchantment plus three. So that means that it gets plus three to all of its attack and damage rolls. Now there is a downside to this weapon and it is the only downside to this weapon. And that is spoiler alert here. If you haven't completed the game, save this video, come back to it. To get this weapon, you have have to have Shadowheart kill the Night Song, which drastically changes how the game plays out to some extent for the rest of your game after you make that choice in Act 2. And that means if you want to get a hold of this weapon without using a mod to get a hold of it, that's the only outcome you're ever going to see if you want to use it through all of your playthroughs. So if you decide not to kill her for a playthrough, you're going to have to spawn the weapon in because you can't get it unless you kill the Night Song. So now let's talk about why this is the best choice of weapon for almost any melee build. And I say almost because if you're a build that relies on finesse weapons, you probably don't want to use this because it's not a finesse weapon. However, it literally gives you advantage on all of your attacks against anybody you want to attack because you just cast darkness on them. Once you cast darkness on them, they are blinded, which means they have disadvantage. You have advantage. As long as you're standing in said darkness, you also get additional damage to your attack. So on top of that plus three from the enchantment, you also also get an additional 1d6. That is really good damage because it is super easy for you to move the darkness around to ensure that you are always in the darkness. You can't get hit by ranged attacks. The AI, in almost every case, there are some little, I'm pretty sure they're bugs where the AI manages to throw some spears at you when you're in the darkness. But for most cases, you can't get attacked by ranged attacks while you're in darkness. This means that any ranged unit is forced to come into the darkness to get you or just skip their turn which gives you insane advantage and control over the battlefield. If you are playing any class or any hybrid class that has the ability to bonus action hide, then you can hide at the end of your turn using your bonus action, which will also just cause the enemy to skip their turn because they have no idea where you're at. You can easily sacrifice two levels of whatever your build is to spec into two levels of rogue to get bonus action hide without really any real detriment to an overall build, especially if you're just planning on sticking to a single class. At 10 levels in any class, you're going to have most of what that class has to offer. You won't miss out on much spending two levels to spec into Rogue. Even if you don't do this and you don't have the option to bonus action hide and you just stand there for everybody to somewhat see in the darkness, you still put the enemy at a massive disadvantage when it comes to trying to deal damage to you. Now let's talk about magic users. Magic users 
users can also benefit from using this weapon. Now, you're not going to benefit from any of the damage dealing effects from this weapon because you're not going to be using it for damage purposes, but the darkness ability that comes with this counts as a spell. So anything that is triggered by casting a spell, for example, the Tempetuous Magic from Storm Sorcery that allows you to fly as a bonus action when you cast a level one spell or higher is triggered by casting darkness with this spear. Just like with melee, if something is inside the darkness, even if you are casting a spell on it, you gain advantage on casting that spell. The enemy also gains disadvantage when they try to attack you. Do note that this advantage on spells while in the darkness only works if the spell needs to make an attack roll for the spell to land. If it's a saving throw situation where the enemy has to roll to save against the spell, the advantage isn't there. Do you have an item or some type of an ability that requires you to be concentrating on a spell to get the bonus from it? Well, guess what? The spell is a spell and it's a concentration spell and it's free. Did you get hit and lose concentration on the spell? Well, it's no big deal because it's free so you can just cast it again and you don't have to worry about wasting a valuable spell slot that could be used to damage an opponent. What if you don't want to use the darkness spell? What if you have a different concentration spell that you want to use that maybe damages the enemies? Well, depending on the type of caster you are and the role you're playing for your party, that's probably going to be a case a lot of the times. But guess what? You get advantage on saving throws, so you have even less of a chance of losing concentration on that valuable spell when you do get hit, as long as you are lightly or heavily obscured. And it is a very, very easy to become lightly obscured. You will have to keep track of this, of course, but it is still a massive advantage. Just like with the melee build, you can do the exact same thing of ensuring that you have the ability to bonus action hide in the darkness to also ensure that the enemy skips their turn and doesn't even attack you in the first place if you actually use the darkness spell as a caster. Which, let's be honest, if you're not concentrating on a spell already that has some other type of benefit, you should be casting darkness. But wait, there's more! Blindness is a status effect, which means that anything that is triggered by you applying a status effect to someone is triggered when you cast the free darkness spell on them. You can cast it every single turn, and when you do cast it, you end it and then reapply it, which ends blindness and then reapplies blindness. So you can reapply a status effect every single turn to trigger other innate and weapon abilities. This is extremely useful whether you are playing melee or a caster. All of the stuff that I mentioned for melee and for casters that are a benefit also apply to ranged builds because you can have this weapon equipped and equip a bow and still get all of the benefit. You do get the ability to obscure yourself, make it hard for other ranged things to hit you because you can shoot outside the darkness, but things won't be able to shoot into the darkness at you. You can make sure that you have the ability to bonus action hide, so you can hide every single turn, and when it becomes your turn again, shoot an enemy and just hide again and never leave the darkness. You can easily move the darkness around to where you need to move it to. If anything comes into the darkness after you, if you don't have the ability to bonus action hide, it's going to be a disadvantage to you and you're going to have advantage on attacking it. Because you are heavily obscured, you have advantage attacking out of it from being hidden as well. The 1d6 additional damage that reads as though it only applies to melee attacks with this weapon also apply to whatever bow you have equipped or ranged weapon you have equipped if the creature is lightly or heavily obscured. So honestly, it doesn't matter what build you have going on unless you need a specific weapon that is labeled a two-handed weapon, meaning you can't equip it in a single hand, or you need a finesse weapon, you should have this weapon equipped on at least one of your characters throughout your playthrough, provided it's a playthrough where you're okay with killing the Night Song. I don't know of any other weapon in the game that is as strong as this weapon. I don't care what it is, hammer aft, mule or whatever that one staff is that gives you a free cast, it don't matter. This spear is the strongest weapon for almost every single possible build. All right, that's it for this video. Hopefully you all found it helpful and informational. If you did, please consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you're looking for some more Baldur's Gate 3 content, you can find a link to another one of my videos on the screen right now. I wanna give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.